why do we need those reference angles? Well, because if we want to find out the value of any trig function of certain angle, then it happens that this value is equal to the value of this trig function of reference angle up to the sign. So it's a lot easier to calculate values of any trig functions of an acute angle from the first quadrant and then by detecting which which quadrant is our angle from and using the cast mnemonic we can find the sign and we can complete the question. Let's see how this works. Use reference angles to find exact values of the indicated trig functions. Exact indicates that we are going to use special triangles rather than a calculator. So tangent to 25, I know that this is the same as plus minus, I don't know this yet, of tangent of the reference angle. So I need to figure out what's the reference angle of 225. If I try to locate 225, it's more than 180. Therefore, the reference angle is this part, 225 minus 180, which is 45. Also, this diagram shows us that the angle is in the third quadrant. And now, what is the sign of tangent in the third quadrant? Oh, it's positive. So this will be positive tangent of 45. Now it's time to refer to the special triangle. That will be half of square, because we are dealing with angle 45. 1, 1, root 2. So tangent of this angle is 1 over 1, so it's just plus 1. Well, let's try on your own the second and third example. If you have any problem, then just look at the video. Cosine 5 pi 6. Well, 5 pi 6 is a little bit less than 1 pi. So this is in the second quadrant. So our angle is in the second quadrant. And cosine in second quadrant is negative. Therefore, this value is negative cosine of the reference angle. What is the reference angle of 5 pi 6? Well, you can draw the diagram and see that this is the same as pi 6. And now, to finish the question, we need to refer to special triangle, half of equilateral triangle, with the relations 1, 2, root 3. Angle pi 6 is the smaller one, this in the top, and cosine will be adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's root 3 over 2. We must remember the minus though. So minus root 3 over 2. And finally, the last question, cosecant 300. Again, I don't want to think about cosecant. I would prefer to think about sine 300. So 1 over 300 can be located somewhere in the fourth quadrant. And the reference angle is this remaining part. So it's actually 60. So that's the same as sine 60. We need to decide, is it plus or minus? Well, sine in the fourth quadrant is actually negative. So it will be minus. And now again, as before, refer to special triangle with the angle 60 here. So that's 1, 2, root 3. Sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's root 3 over 2. Negative 1 over root 3 over 2. And when we flip it, it's negative 2 over root 3. We could rationalize it. And the final answer is negative 2 root 3 over 3. In the next question, we want to find the exact value of each expression. So each of these questions really contains three of the previous questions. So as you see, we need to be fluent in connecting facts with angles and special triangles. So sine 210. 210 looks like it's more than 180, so it's third quadrant. Sine in the third quadrant is negative. So we have negative. And the reference angle is actually 30. So negative sine 30 plus 135 
is in the second quadrant. Cosine in the second quadrant is negative, so we have minus cosine of reference angle looks like 180 minus 135 is 45. And tangent 315, well, that's in the fourth quadrant. Tangent will be negative, and that's the same as tangent of reference angle, which is again 45 degrees. Let's draw our favorite golden triangle. 30 degrees is here. That's 1, 2, root 3. Therefore, sine of 30 is 1 half. So we really have negative 1 half. These two negatives becomes positive. Cosine, well, let's refer to half of the square this time. Cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2. So that's 1 over root 2. And tangent 45 is 1 times 1. So overall, we have negative 1 half plus root 2 over 2 when we get rid of irrationality. So we could leave the answer this way, or we could bring it under common denominator, and that will be root 2 minus 1 over 2, final answer. And the last question in radians. The first one, it looks like it's a quadrantal angle, 3 pi half. Well, 3 pi half is exactly here, it's like 270 degrees. So sine of 3 pi half is negative 1. Tangent of pi quarter, we can already use the previous sketch of the special triangle. Tangent of pi quarter is really 1. Minus cosine of pi thirds. Pi thirds is like 60 degrees, so it's this angle. Cosine is 1 half. So that's actually quite simple. Negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 3 halves altogether. The next problem asks us to find all values of theta from the first period, from 0 to 360, satisfying the equation, which really means solve this equation in the first period. So cotangent theta is 1. Cotangent is reciprocal of tangent. But since it's equal to 1, then tangent theta will also be 1. And we remember that 1 comes from half of the square, 1, 1, root 2. So value 1 refers to the angle 45. Therefore, theta is equal 45. But this is a reference angle. What about our final answer? Is that the only angle that satisfies this condition? Or do we have more such angles? Well, first, let's decide which quadrant the theta can be. It can be in the first quadrant, that's for sure, but also in the third quadrant because tangent is positive in the third quadrant. So our reference angle could be placed either here or there. Therefore, our final answer will be either this angle, which is 45, or that angle, which is 180 plus 45. So the answer is theta equals 45 degrees, or 180 plus 45 is 225 degrees. And the next question, sine is negative. Well, negative sine indicates that our theta must be in the third or fourth quadrant. And the value root 3 over 2 must come from the golden triangle. So if this is 1, 2, this is root 3. Since first we will look for the reference angle, let's disregard this minus for a second and just figure out what kind of acute angle theta would give us sine equal to root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2 is sine of this angle. What is this angle? 60 degrees. Therefore, the theta reference is 60 degrees, but we need to place the 60 degrees either in the third or in the fourth quadrant. Therefore, our final answer will be either this angle or that angle. Okay, how to recover the first angle? It is 180 plus 60. So 180 plus 60 gives us 240. Or 
the second angle is like 360 minus 60. So that gives us 300. So those are the two possible answers for theta. And the next question is very similar, except that this time we're working radians. So solve this equation by finding all thetas in radians from the first period from 0 to 2 pi. Again, the first piece of information tells us that cosine is positive, so we are looking for theta in first or fourth quadrant where cosine is positive. One half leads us to golden triangle which has the values 1, 2 and root 3. One half is cosine of that angle and this angle in radians is pi thirds. So our theta reference is pi thirds, therefore we are placing the pi thirds in the first or fourth quadrant and our final answer is either this angle or that angle. So theta is equal, well the first angle is just pi thirds and the second angle is like 2 pi minus pi thirds. 2 pi minus pi thirds. Well, but 2 pi is like 6 pi thirds minus 1 pi thirds is 5 pi thirds. So that's our final answer, 5 pi thirds and pi thirds. And the last question, cosecant is negative. Again, let's rewrite cosecant into 1 over sine theta is negative root 2, which means that sine theta by itself is negative 1 over root 2. Sine is negative, meaning it must be in the third or fourth quadrant. The angle theta is in these two quadrants. Also, using special triangles, let's say forget about the sine for a second and think about theta reference. That comes from special triangle, which is half of the square, 1, 1, root 2. So the special angle will be pi quarter. Okay, therefore the reference angle is pi quarter. And we need to place this reference angle in the third or fourth quadrant. So our final answer is this angle or that angle. So we have theta by itself must be pi plus pi quarter. So it's 5 pi quarters, because pi plus pi quarter is 5 pi quarters. Or 2 pi minus pi quarter. So 2 pi is the same as 8 pi quarters minus 1 pi quarter is 7 pi quarters. Here's the answer. In this question, we are asked to prove the following identities. We can prove it just by using definitions of trig functions in terms of x, y, and r, as well as Pythagorean equation. So you will see that all of these equations are based on Pythagorean equation. That's why those identities will be called Pythagorean identities. Okay, let's see the first one. If we start with Pythagorean equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, which we know it's always true because that's basically a definition of a radius r in a circle with the center at the origin. And what we can do to this equation, we can, for example, divide by r squared both sides. So we end up with x over r squared plus y over r squared equals 1. But x over r, that actually defines cosine of some angle theta. And we need to square it. We can square outside. And y over r, that represents sine of angle theta. Square equals 1. OK, as you see, this is the same equation. So we have the first identity. Notice that if we square any trig function, we can write it like this. And actually on the web assign, it's good to remember that sometimes you need to enter your functions in that way if you want to square them. But in mathematical writing, we'll write the square 
just above the function. So that's the same as cosine square theta. It's just different notation, but it means the same. So the square is directly after the name of the function. Okay, let's rewrite sine in front so we can actually see that this is the same. Sine square theta plus cosine square theta equals 1. Yes, it's proven. Now we can do exactly the same trick here. Start, start with the original Pythagorean equation. But since we want to have 1 as a first term, we may want to divide the whole equation by x squared. Okay, at that moment I will ask you to stop the video and finish this proof by yourself, as well as the next identity. So, we'll have 1 here plus y over x squared equals r over x squared. And the final step, we just need to recall which trick functions those ratios actually represent. So we have 1 plus y over x, that's tangent, so tangent square theta, and r over x is a reciprocal of x over r, which is cosine. So that's secant square theta. So yes, it's proven. And the last question, similar idea, start with the original Pythagorean equation, but this time we want the second term to be 1, so let's divide the whole equation by y squared. Then we have x over y squared plus 1 equals r over y squared. x over y is the same as cotangent squared plus 1 equals, since y over r is sine, reciprocal of sine is cosecant squared theta. So yes, we have all identities proven. And the last observation for this lesson will be to justify that co-functions of complementary angles are really equal. We can justify this geometrically just by looking at the right angle triangle. If this is angle theta, then that angle is 90 minus theta. So those are complementary angles. And if I call, let's say, this A, B, and C, then sine of theta is really B over C. But that's the same as cosine of 90 minus theta. Similarly, cosine of theta is A over C, but that's the same as sine of 90 minus theta, and so on and so forth. So other identities will have the same justification. Therefore, we could take advantage of this fact, and if needed, we could replace, for example, sine of 18 by cosine of 72, tangent of 80 by cotangent of 10, because the angles are complementary. Secant of pi thirds is the same as cosecant of pi six, and so on and so forth. So, for example, if I need to evaluate sine square 18 degrees plus sine square 72 degrees, then, well, I could change one of them, for example, this one, into the co-function of complementary angle, and I could say, okay, this is the same as sine square 18 plus cosine square 18, but then sine square of an angle plus cosine square of the same angle is actually equal to 1 from Pythagorean equation from the previous page. So, hmm, isn't it neat? We don't need a calculator, we still know the value. Obviously that works only for complementary angles, but it's a good property to know.